Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make a boat race game on Scratch. So firstly what we'll need is a device capable of running Scratch. Second, we will need to make a Scratch account. And third, we'll need to open the starter project which can be found in the link. Step 1. Controlling the boat. This is how your screen should look after you open the starter project. To begin with, we're going to go into our events tab and we're going to grab a when green button clicked block. Next, we're going to move into our motion blocks. We're going to grab a point in direction and we're going to change that from 90 to 0 degrees. Then we're going to grab a go to X and Y block. These numbers should already be set at minus 190 and minus 150 for X and Y respectively, but if they're not, you can change them. Then we're going to go into controls. I'm going to grab a forever block and place that below our already placed code. Then we'll head back into the motion blocks and we will choose a point towards mouse pointer block and place that in our forever block. Then we're going to grab a move 10 steps and we'll change this from 10 to 1. Step 2, crashing. So now we're going to go into our costumes tab and we're going to duplicate our boat. To do this we'll click and hold and click duplicate. Then we'll go into our duplicated sprite and change the costume name to hit. Now we're going to have to make it appear as if the boat's broken after it's crashed. To do this, we'll choose the very bottom icon in the right hand side and just click and make squares on the boat and click and drag them. You can twist them, you can reposition them, just to make it look like the boat is different and to make it very obviously different than the normal boat. Now we're going to go back into our code section, which is just the tab below the scratch icon. Then we're going to go into our control section and we're going to grab an if statement block. We'll click and drag that in, onto the screen and put it inside our forever code. Then we're going to go into our operators and grab a less than block. Click and drag that into the empty space in the if statement and we'll change that to less than five. Now we're going to go into our sensing and we're going to take a distance to mouse pointer and pop that in. And then we're going to go into our control blocks. We're going to grab an if statement again and click and drag that in between our already placed if statement and our forever block. Then we're going to go into sensing and grab a touching color block and place that in our if statement. Then to get the color we want, we're going to click on the yellow color and use the dropper, which is at the bottom, to select the brown colour on our backdrop. Then we're going to go into looks and select the switch costume 2 and this will be our hit costume. We'll then select the say for 2 seconds block and in this you can really say whatever you'd like. It's just for when the boat hits the wall and cracks. So I'm just going to say no. And then this will appear for two seconds. After that, we're going to grab another switch costume two block. But this time, it's going to be swapping it back to our normal. After this, we're going to go into our motion section. And we're going to click a point in direction. Click and drag that into our field. And change it from 90 to 0 degrees again. Then we'll grab a go to X and Y block and again this will be set to negative 190 and negative 150. So whenever the boat hits the brown obstacles, the boat will crash and go back to the beginning again. Now it's time to test your code. You should be able to see that when you crash into the brown barrier, your boat breaks up it displays your message and then goes back to the beginning to start again. Step 3. Winning the game. Again, we're going to grab another if statement and pop that in between the if and the forever block. Then we're going to go into sensing and grab the touch and colour block. And this time we're going to set it to the yellow colour in the right hand 
corner. Then we're going to grab a say block and again you can save whatever you'd like for this. This is just what you'll save when you win the game. So I just said we won and then we're going to grab a stop all block. And now it's time to test your code again. Step number four, adding sound effects. Now we're going to go into the sound tab next to the costumes. And in the bottom left hand corner, you'll be able to choose a sound. And this will bring up a whole range of sounds that you can choose from. Any sound will do, you can choose whichever you like. It will just be the sound that you'll hear when the boat crashes. So for this, I've chosen the crash symbol. But take your time, find one you like. And once you've chosen it, what we'll do is we'll go back into our code and we will go into the sounds block and from there we will grab the play sound until done click and drag that and drop it in between the top switch costume to hit and say for two seconds now it's time to test your code and see if it's all working As you heard, our sound just played and message displayed. Step five, adding a timer. So to create a timer, we have to create a variable. To do this, we go into the variables tab, select make a variable, and we'll call this time. Select for all sprites, and then click okay. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the stage backdrop so below this large image of our stage, we can see a smaller one. We'll click that one and the stage right and above that should become highlighted. Here we can start adding code to our stage. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into events, click the when green flag clicked, drag that in. And then we're going to go into our variable section again and grab the set time to. Then back into control and grab a forever block. And then we'll grab a wait one second and we'll change that to 0 0.1. And next we'll go back into the variable section and select the change time by one and set this also to 0 0.1. Step number six, adding boost. Now we're going to go back into our stage settings. We're going to go to the backdrop setting at the top next to the code tab and we're going to select backdrop number two. As we can see, this has some white arrows on it and we're going to use this to be a booster. So now we're going to go back onto our boat and go into the code setting and we're going to grab another if statement and then grab a sensing touch and color block and we're going to set that colour to be white. So we're just going to select the dropper again and go into the white arrow. Then we're going to head to motion and grab a move 10 steps block and change that to three. So whenever you go over the white arrow, you'll move three steps instead of one. Step seven, adding obstacles. Now to make an obstacle, we're going to have to make it the same colour as the brown that's already there. So what we're going to do is head back into the stage backdrop and then we go into backdrop again and then when we get up this little screen where we can edit it we're going to click the fill and we're going to go to the drop down arrow and we'll see the dropper again. What we're going to do there is select the brown on the screen and then we're going to head out of that completely, go into the little plus it looks like a cat symbol at the very bottom right hand corner. We're going to hover over that and then go up to the second option which will say paint and we'll select that and that will let us draw our own sprite. So now what we're going to do is select the square option and start drawing a very thin block to be an obstacle and we're going to fill it with the already filled brown in the screen because that will make it the same colour as the obstacles already placed on the background. So then we have to make sure that the centre of the sprite is in line with the plus. So as you can see there will be a plus on the screen and a plus on the sprite. Just line those up and that will make sure it rotates in the centre. 
So now we have to place it on our stage. We can just click and drag it into the space we want. If it doesn't fit, you can just delete some off the end by erasing it, or you can resize it using the size tool below the stage. Once this is done, we're gonna go back into our code and make it turn. So to do this, we're gonna go into our code. We're gonna select a when green button clicked button. We're gonna click and drag that into our field. We're gonna grab another forever block from the control field. Click and drag that in. After that, we're gonna to head to motion and we're gonna click a turn clockwise. We'll click and drag that in and place it in our forever block. And we'll change that from 15 degrees to one degrees. And this means the gate that we've created will just keep rotating forever. And now it's time to do the final test of our code. Does everything work? So here you should be able to see your boat following your mouse pointer. If you go over the white arrows, you should zoom a little bit further ahead. You should be able to avoid the gate that is rotating. And when you get to the yellow island, it should say we won. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope this helped and we hope you enjoy your boat trace game.